In today's tabletop review, we're going to be unboxing and taking a look at a PDW uh, vert stock system made by Battle Arms. This carries a part number of 100-010-167. This product is available on my website. I'll put the link in the description if you're interested in purchasing one of these. So before we get into it, let me preface the video by stating that I'm not going to be installing this on any firearm. This is strictly a unboxing and a review of the contents video and discussion of some of the specifications. So this is a fairly new item. Um, it's been out for a little while, but um, this is uh, one of the few that I've had a chance to actually get my hands on. Um, it weighs in at 19.5 ounces. Uh, one of the nice things about this is it uses uh, an M16 um, compatible bolt carrier group. So you don't need a proprietary bolt carrier group. Um, that's been a pet peeve of mine with some of these other collapsible PDW stocks is they require a proprietary bolt carrier group and that actually jacks the whole price of uh, the stock system up when it when it requires a you know a different bolt carrier group um, we have a nice uh, continuous cheek rest the cheek rests uh, are interchangeable uh, and they will have different colors and patterns I don't believe those are available yet, but you, as you can see on the packaging here, uh, this one is in carbon fiber, so it actually looks pretty good just as is. Um, the uh, collapsed length is 4.75 inches. Uh, fully extended length, 8.75 inches. We've got four locking stock positions, two QD sling swivel points. The guide rods are a high impact resistant S7 tool steel, uh, not a 4140 or a softer steel. That's one of the, the, the uh, uh, notes that they make in their uh, product description. The stock is fast deployment. Um, the stock locks in both directions. It's CNC'd from aircraft grade aluminum and S7 tool steel. Milspec Type 3 Class 2 hard anodized black finish. Uh, like mentioned, two built in QD points and they're non rotating. Uh, to me, that's important. Um, the uh, buttstock is made from a billet 7075 T6 aluminum, and uh, the buffer it ships with is 3.9 ounces. So, uh, you know, that's, that's equivalent of a, a let's see, a H one buffer give or take um, off the uh, top of my head uh, standard carbine weight buffer would be three ounces this is 3.9 and of course it's completely made in the USA so um, the packaging here okay now we got the specs out of the way um, the packaging is basically a slip covered box um, and uh, so let's have a little slip cover we can pull off some some people refer to this as a white box and then a slip cover that goes over it and it is packed uh, fairly nice here um, we've got a battle arms development decal that comes with it um, these would be installation instructions um, I'll graze over this um, and we'll talk about um, any highlights that I see in this there's also um, there's a, uh, a note here that talks about uh, how this is tested on a Colt 6920 and about uh, this may cause problems on some rifles where the bolt won't lock back um, because the firearm is under gassed so there's a note here about that this is also on their website underneath the product uh, description all right, so uh, inside the box, you can see that uh, you know you've got adequate uh, foaming foam uh, protection here. We've got foam on the bottom, foam surrounding the stock, foam on the top. Uh, the cutout in the front is for the proprietary tool. Um, so uh, 20 foot pounds max, hand tighten, and then the stock system. So let's uh, get the box out of the way. 
so the stock system is extremely compact. Um, you know, the uh, cheek rest, um, which this one appears to be a carbon fiber or maybe it's a plastic with a carbon fiber finish on it, looks really nice. You've got two bolts on either side uh, that you can remove and you can remove this piece and replace it with something different or if you wanted to paint this. Um, like mentioned, uh, they're supposed to be selling different covers for this. I haven't seen those yet, but uh, those, those should be uh, along shortly. Um, got our spring and our buffer tube. Excuse me while I take this off camera just shortly so I can remove the buffer tube. Don't want everything falling out. Alright, so there's all of the components that uh, ship in the box. And let's get a better angle on this. All right, um, so here's the uh, patent pending um, buffer, and it does weigh in at 3.9 ounces. Um, nicely machined, nicely made. Um, we have a, a plastic end cap on it. Um, it looks like there's a uh, roll pin that's punched in there. Um, from what I can see so far, this is nicely made. Um, the spring appears to be a uh, straight up standard stainless steel spring from what I can gather. And then the uh, buffer tube. Uh, the rear of the buffer tube has the notches on it designed for the wrench to uh, tighten it down. You can see the wrench fits directly over that. Um, nice design, included tool, um, buffer tube. Um, I can't tell if there's a dry film lube on the inside of the buffer tube and uh, Battle Arms does not make mention of that. So, um, let's see. Now, the uh, stock assembly itself, um, like mentioned, we've got two uh, QD sockets here, non-rotational sockets. We've got one here and we've got one right there. We've got a single push button release to extend the stock. Um, and you've got um, lock points here. We just depress the button and slide it in until it locks into place. Minimal movement uh, once it's locked into place. Very solid. So uh, uh, looks good. Um, you've got one one of these rods is longer than the other. That's by design, uh, in case you're wondering. Um, the uh, fit and finish of this, um, I can't find any any flaws with it. Um, the machining is exceptional. Uh, I do not know if this is real carbon fiber. Um, my guess is that it's uh, probably not, but you know, it's hard to tell. I'm not a carbon fiber expert. It looks nice. It looks like carbon fiber. I don't see a carbon fiber pattern on the inside right there. So. Normally, um, from what I've seen with carbon fiber, you've got the weave pattern all the way through and you can see it on the inside. So maybe this is just a, an outer uh, layer of carbon fiber over a polymer material. Uh, the lockups on this, um, I don't see there being any issue. You can't uh, extend it too far and uh, uh, pull these rods out of this assembly. Um, I don't see a facility here for adding any type of butt pad. Um, so uh, in case anybody was wondering about that, I know I was wondering at one point in time is, you know, could we put a rubber butt pad on this? But uh, it doesn't appear that uh, that's possible. Um, uh, the buffer tube... Looks to be very well machined. Um, you know, we've got nice smooth um, um, threading here, nice uh, mil spec black finish. And let's see, let's go back to our notes here. Um, Um, let's see, talks about bull carry group, uh, the installation, the cheek rest, guide rods, the latch, weighted buffer, 
and installation instructions. So, um, so the installation of this, um, actually, since I have not installed one of these, um, it looks like you need to remove the co uh, carbon fiber cover piece to install the uh, stock assembly and it requires a 1 8 inch hex key which does not appear to be included and it talks about uh, um, putting some uh, they call lube on the threads of the buffer tube but uh, we all know that that would be a, a mil spec anti-seize grease like the aeroshell 33 ms which you've seen me use um, actually they do say grease they don't make any mention of what the appropriate type of grease should be um, tighten the buffer tube down using the supplied wrench it's interesting that the max torque spec is listed at 20 foot pounds um, you're supposed to tighten it by hand and how do you know it's at 20 foot pounds of torque if you're tightening it by hand and then when you're done reinstall the cheek rest and the buffer spring and that's basically it so I don't see I don't see any complicated uh, issues with the uh, installation of this on an AR-15 rifle I re really wish I could uh, install this I'd love to have this on uh, my SBR um, but um, uh, at some point in time in the future I'll, I may get something like this and uh, we'll see an installation video so for your money this retails for uh, $399 um, you can get a better price than that on my website if you follow the link. Um, I think that's a very reasonable price for the quality that you're getting in something like this. Uh, if you need this type of collapsible PDW type stock, it is very well designed and uh, the fit and finish and the materials used are top notch from what I can see. So. <clears throat> Also, uh, if you do intend on purchasing one of these, uh, do visit uh, Battle Arms Development's website directly. Uh, they do have some additional notes about uh, fitment and um, fitment on the 300 blackout and so on, which I won't go into. And they, let's see, finish up with my notes. Um, let's see, it says it will not work with solid filled 9mm bolt carriers. Um, they have a 9mm compatible vert stock available. This one is not compatible with that. This is designed specifically for, for 5.56223 direct gas impingement systems. It will also work on 300 blackout uh, DI systems, but must have the appropriate gas port size. Now they also say that use of nickel boron cold coated bolt carrier groups may cause damage to the buffer system due to the ID, the inside diameter of the BCG being undersized. Uh, so keep that in mind um, uh, if you're going to purchase one of these. Um, you, you may have to use a different um, uh, bolt carrier group if you're running a nickel boron like I do in all of my rifles. The inside rear cavity of the bolt carrier must be 0.625 diameter by 0.265 deep minimum to clear the buffer. So uh, those are pretty much all the notes I have off of their website as well as what's included with this. Uh, and hopefully that information helps you make up your, your mind if you want to uh, install one of these. So uh, thanks for watching the video on the Battle Arms Vert PDW stock uh, unboxing and tabletop review.